So we are looking at the problem of constructing a minimum cost spanning tree in a weighted graph. We said there were two basic strategies one could think of to do this. The first one leads to an algorithm called Prim's algorithm and the second one to an algorithm called Kruskal's algorithm. So in this lecture we will look at Prim's algorithm. So the problem domain is the following. We have a weighted undirected graph. So B is the set of vertices, A is the set of edges and W is the weight function. We assume that G is connected. Because if G is not connected, then there is no way to build a spanning tree. A spanning tree, remember, is a subset of the edges which connects all the vertices in G. So if G is originally not connected, then there is no way we can actually connect it using a subset of edges. So G is a connected, weighted, undirected graph. And now we want to identify a spanning tree with minimum weight. So the strategy in Prim's algorithm is start with a minimum cost edge and keep extending the tree with the smallest edge connected to the current tree. So here is a kind of high level version of Prim's algorithm. Right? So we start with the minimum cost edge and we, we add it to the list. So TE is a list of edges that form the tree. So we will describe the tree as a collection of edges. And then we note that we have added i and j to the tree. So i and j are now connected. So this leaves n minus two vertices which have to be connected. So we have to do something n minus two times. So at n minus two times we have to add an edge. Each time we add an edge one more vertex will be connected. So we know that after that many edges we will have a tree. Remember that a tree has totally n minus one edges. So we have added the first edge by starting with the minimum cost edge. So we can add n minus two four. So what do we do? n minus two times we choose the smallest edge which has one endpoint in the tree and one endpoint outside the tree. Right? So this is a vertex V now which is not connected to the tree. So we connect it. So we append this, uh, this new edge to our list of uh, tree edges and we add this vertex to our list of tree vertices. And at the end, after doing this n minus two times, the claim is that we have connected all the edges and we have a spanning tree. And moreover, the claim is because we are choosing the minimum cost edge to add at each point, the overall thing is a minimum cost spanning tree. Of course, we will have to prove all this, but this is what the aim is of Prim's algorithm. Right? So why do we need to prove something? Well, you can see that like Dijkstra's algorithm, Prim's algorithm is a very, is a greedy algorithm. Right? At each point, we have to decide how to extend the tree. So we look in the neighborhood of the current tree. We look for the nearest vertex which is connected to the tree by the shortest edge and we add it. So this is a local choice. And then we keep making the sequence of local choices and ultimately we arrive globally at a spanning tree and our claim is that globally we have built the best possible tree. Right? So this is always an example of a greedy algorithm where you make a sequence of local choices, never go back and reconsider them and finally achieve a global optimum. And very often as we mentioned before with the XS algorithm, such a strategy may not give you the right thing. So you have to always justify that this works. So in order to prove Prim's algorithm correct, and indeed we will also use this to prove Kruskal's al algorithm correct later on, we prove a very useful lemma called the minimum separator lemma. So let's assume that we have this weighted undirected graph and we look at the set of vertices B, right? And we assume that it is divided into two parts. Right? So it's called partitioning. So there are two separate disjoint parts, which I will call U and W. Okay? And I'm assuming that both of these are non-empty. So there's at least one vertex in U, there's at least one vertex in W. Now let me look at the smallest edge which goes across this partition. Okay? Now remember that the whole graph is connected. So there must be a way to go from U to W. So among all the ways I can go from U to W, let me check the smallest edge. Let me call the endpoint small U and small W. So now the claim is that every minimum cost spanning tree must include this edge. Okay? This is a very powerful claim. Of course, uh, there is a side condition, which is that we are assuming for the moment that no two edges have the same weight. We will see later on how we will relax this condition. Right? So under the condition that no two edges have the same weight, the minimum separator lemma says that whenever you separate B into two parts which are not empty, then the smallest edge connecting these two parts must lie in every spanning tree, every minimum cost spanning tree. So now why is this the case? So let's assume that we have these two parts. So I will draw one part as say uh, this yellow thing. So let's call this U and the rest which I have not drawn a boundary for. So this is B. So this is W. Okay. 
So now let's look at the smallest edge connecting U and W. Right? So now the claim is that this must be in every minimum cost panning tree. So suppose it is not. Okay. So then suppose then th there must be some minimum cost panning tree because it, we know that the graph is connected so there are many spanning trees and let's assume that there is a minimum cost spanning tree T okay, which does not include this edge. So in that tree U must be connected to W because any spanning tree connects all the vertices. So there is a red path from U to W in, in my hypothetical spanning tree T which does not include this edge. Okay. So now the claim is if I take that particular tree and then I remove the edge u prime v prime and replace it by the edge u v, I get a new tree, right? I get a tree t prime. So t prime is t minus the edge u prime v prime plus the edge u v. But now by assumption u v was the smallest vertex, smallest weight edge going from inside u to outside u, right? So therefore u v has weight strictly less than u prime v prime. Therefore t prime has a weight strictly less than t and you can check that everything else is connected right because any con any things which are connected so u prime is now connected to v prime through this long thing and therefore all other vertices which are connected by t remain connected in t prime therefore t prime is a valid spanning tree it is of smaller cost and therefore t could not have been a minimum cost spanning tree right? so this is our proof that the smallest cost edge from inside the partition to outside the partition must lie in every minimum cost spanning tree Now before we move ahead, uh, I just want to make one small remark. So we, were, we have to be careful when we prove this lemma a little bit. So it is true that there are among all the edges going from inside to outside, UV is the smallest one. So one might te be tempted to just say, okay, so UV is the smallest one, pick any edge in my given tree T prime, I given tree T which goes from inside to outside and replace it. So for instance, we might accidentally pick up this edge and replace it with this edge. But notice that if I pick up this edge and replace it with this edge, then perhaps there is no other way to get to V double prime, right? So it is very crucial that we choose the correct edge to replace. So we, we, we have a target edge we want to introduce U to V. Therefore, we must follow the path in T from U to V. And that path must start inside and go outside. So it must cross the boundary somewhere. And this is the edge to replace, okay? So we should not make the mistake of replacing some arbitrary edge, we must replace that edge which allows us to go from u to v in the, in the tree, hypothetical tree in order to make the new tree. So once we have this lemma, the correctness of Prim's algorithm is very obvious. So at every stage, remember in Prim's algorithm, we have built this tree TV which consists of a few edges and then we have everything that's lying outside and now among these we want to connect one of them. Right? So if we think of this set, the set inside is my u and the set outside is my w and we are picking by assumption in Prim's algorithm the smallest weight edge which connects u to w. By this minimum, minimum separator lemma, this edge must lie in every spanning tree. So the algorithm that Prim's algorithm, uh, the edge that Prim's algorithm picks is in fact the edge that the lemma forces us to pick. So therefore Prim's algorithm is definitely correct. So in fact we can use the lemma to make Prim's algorithm a little more relaxed. Recall that in our original formulation, we started with the smallest edge. Okay. But now it's easy to see that if I take any vertex, right, and I look at all the edges going out of it, then I can take U to be the vertex itself, and I can take W to be everything else, the set minus this vertex. Then I know that the smallest edge which goes from V to this set must be in every spanning tree. So in other words, if I start at any vertex and look at the smallest edge attached to it, I can start with that because that must be in every spanning tree by the minimum separator level. So this gives us the following algorithm for Prim's uh, strategy. So we start with any vertex S. Okay? Now for each vertex which is not in our current set of tree vertices, we maintain the smallest edge weight from that vertex to some tree vertex. So we call that distance of V. And we also, because we want to build up the tree as a set of edges, we also remember where that edge goes to. So we remember it as a neighbor, right? So if I have some tree at, in, at any given point and I, I, and I know that for this V, this neighbor U is the smallest 
uh, edge connecting it to me. Then here I will I will keep its distance as the weight of the edge, and I will keep its neighbor as u. This will allow me to keep track of which edges I am adding. So now, at every stage, I look for the smallest vertex which is outside in terms of the distance. Okay. Then I add it to the set and I update its neighbors' distances and and values. Right. So this is very similar to Dijkstra's algorithm. Right. The only thing is the update of the distance. Doesn't involve adding the my distance plus the weight. It only involves considering the weight. So when we see the algorithm itself, you'll see the uh, parallel to Dijkstra's algorithm even more clear. So here is the final algorithm for Prim's uh, 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 shortest uh, minimum cost spanning tree. Right. So you initialize all but all vertices to be unvisited. This is the burnt thing. We initialize them all to have no neighbors because nothing is in the tree, so there are no neighbors in the tree, and they are all at distance infinity. This is initialization. Now I pick some initial starting vertex, say one, and I mark it to be visited, but I don't have any edges yet, right? So now for each edge going out of one, I update its status. So I say for every edge one of the form one comma j, okay? So I say that the neighbor of j in the tree. So the tree now consists of just this one vertex. It's a trivial tree which has one vertex and therefore one minus one zero edges, right? So the neighbor of uh, of j is is one because that's its connection, and the distance is the weight of this edge, right? So this is my first step. Now I have to add the remaining n minus one edges to my tree. So n minus one times I do what you would do in Dijkstra's algorithm in a different format. You pick that u which is not visited and whose distance is minimum. Mark it as visited. Now you know how it is connected to the tree. So you add that edge to my. Uh, so you add the edge. Which tells us how it's connected. U and the neighbor of U. This edge we add to the tree set of tree edges. Now for every edge out of U, whose neighbor is not visited, if the current distance to the tree is more than the weight of this edge. So basically, I had, I have now added this U, and there is another vertex V, and it claims to be connected somewhere else, right? So maybe this distance D, and this distance D prime. Okay. Suppose D is bigger than D prime. Then now that this is in the tree, now that U has been added to the tree, now V is connected by a smaller edge to the tree, right? So if the distance that I currently have for V is bigger than the weight of the U V edge, then I will replace that weight by the weight of the U V edge, and I will say the neighbor of V is now U. So that when I add V to the tree, I will add the edge U V. So this is exactly what Dijkstra's algorithm does, except for this update. Okay, in this update we add D of U plus the weight of U, right? So we in Dijkstra's algorithm we want the cumulative distance. Here we want the one-step distance from the nearest node in the in the tree. But otherwise, Prim's algorithm is basically a restatement of Dijkstra's algorithm with a different update function. And additionally, we have this uh, thing that we could have done it in Dijkstra also. We could have maintained in Dijkstra's algorithm the path. Right. So had we maintained the path, it will be exactly like this neighbor relation here. We want to know when each edge is added to my shortest uh, path set, the burnt set, why it was added. Right, so here we are doing that. We are adding it. We are also remembering the edge through which it was added. So let's try and execute it before we do a complexity analysis of this thing. So remember, we can start anywhere. So let's start at one. Right. So we start at one, and we mark our tree consisting of one. Now, since this uh, edge starts at one, we have to update the values of the neighbors of one, namely three and two. Okay. So we mark for three. We say that its distance, which we mark in green, to the tree is 18 because the tree consists of only the vertex one, and its neighbor in the tree, for, which is at this distance, is the vertex one. Similarly, the other neighbor of one is two, so we will say that its distance is 10 and its neighbor is one. Right now, among so everywhere else, I have not mentioned it explicitly, but everywhere else, the values are minus one and uh, are the, sorry infinity and minus one. So we say the distance is infinity and the neighbor is minus one. Right, so this is the default value. So wherever the default value is present, we will just leave it out, indicating that the value is effectively not been set yet. We know it's a connected graph, so we will eventually set it. So we don't have to worry about it. But in this uh, illustration, we will just leave it out. So we have these two uh, candidates now, which are uh, not visited and which have some uh, reasonable distance associated. So we will pick the smaller of the two. So we will pick the one which says 10, and therefore at our next step, we visit. The vertex two, and we add this edge one two to our tree. Now, having added two, we have to do this update. So we look at the neighbors of two. So the neighbors of two are the vertex three and the vertex five. 
So for the vertex 2, from 2 we have a new distance 6. So if we go by R2, the distance of 3 to the tree is only 6 and then it would be connected to 2 which is 6 is smaller than 18. Right? So 18 was our earlier best estimate of how far 3 was from the tree. So now we will replace 18 comma 1 by 6 comma 2 indicating now the vertex 3 is 6 distance away from the tree and it, if it were to be connected at that distance it would be connected to 2. Similarly 5 which was earlier unlabeled now becomes labeled as 22 indicating that it is a distance 20 from the tree and its its neighbor in the tree the nearest neighbor is the vertex 2. Now again we pick the smaller of the two so we will pick this vertex 3 to add to the tree. right? And once we add it we will update the status of 4 because that is the only new neighbor. We do not update the status of 1 because 1 has already been added to the tree. We only look at those neighbors of 3 which are not visited. So now 4 gets the distance 70 with a neighbor 3. Okay. Then among these two now 20 is smaller than 70. So we will add 5 to our tree and then we will update the status of 6 and 7. So 6 is now a distance 10 with neighbor 5. 7 is also a distance 10 with neighbor 5. Now we have two vertices with distance 10. We could pick either one. Okay. So let us for example pick 7. So if we pick 7 then we add it to the tree and now we update the status of 6. Earlier it was a distance 10 with neighbor 5 but now it is a distance 5 with neighbor 6. So we reduce its uh, with neighbor 7. So we reduce its distance and we reduce change its neighbor. Now among 5 and 70 we have uh, 6 as the uh, vertex 6 is the nearer one. So we add that and finally we add 4 and this is the tree that we get. Okay, So this is how Prim's algorithm works. It is very similar to Dijkstra in principle, but it uses a very different update function. So the complexity is also similar to Dijkstra's algorithm. We have an outer loop which runs n times, order n times because we have to add n minus 1 edges to form the tree. And at each iteration, we add one vertex to the tree. Now there, are, there is this order n scan in order to find the minimum cost vertex to add. So we already saw that this is a bottleneck in Dijkstra's algorithm also to find the minimum distance vertex to add. And then when we add a vertex, we have to do an again a scan to update all the entries. So if we have an adjacency matrix, this will again take order n time and therefore overall it takes order n square. So exactly as in Dijkstra's algorithm, moving from an adjacency matrix to adjacency list representation of the edges allows us to reduce the complexity of the updates. So across the n iterations, we do a total of order m updates because we update only according to the neighbors, the, degree, the sum of the degrees of all the vertices. However, in order to bring it down from order n square, we also need to be able to compute the minimum distance efficiently for which we need a heap. Right? So once we have a heap, which we will examine in a later lecture, the claim is we can find the minimum and update the distance information in log n time. So then this gives us overall this complexity exactly like the extra of n log n plus m log n. So this comes from the finding the minimum because n times we have to find the minimum and this comes from the updates because we have to do m updates overall each update takes log n times so we get m plus n log n exactly as we did for uh, Dijkstra's algorithm. So one last point before we leave Prim's algorithm remember that in our correctness we had used the minimum separator lemma in which we had assumed that edge weights are distinct. So of course, as we have seen, even in the example that we executed, we could have edges, multiple edges with the same weight. So how do we deal with this in the lemma? Well, we could argue that we can make the cost to be not just exactly the weight, but the weight plus some other component. So in general, we could say that we fix an overall ordering of the edges. There are m edges, so we just number the edges arbitrarily 1 to m. And we say that one edge is smaller than another. It has a smaller weight. If either the weight is actually smaller, or the weights are equal but the index in this ordering is smaller. Right? So with E and F we have the weight of U V and the weight of U prime V prime but we also have this index I and J. So this is some I between 1 to M, this is some J between 1 to M. So either the weight of E must be smaller than the weight of F or the weights are equal then I must be smaller than J. Right? So this gives us a tie breaking rule. So this will now basically tell us that we can always compare two edges and declare one is smaller than the other and what Prim's algorithm will do is pick the smaller of the two. Okay. So, so what this corresponds to saying is that we are actually giving a strategy for choosing when we have two equal things. So the 
algorithm says choose a u such that distance is minimum and if there are multiple u's with the same minimum distance we pick an arbitrary one so what does it mean to pick an arbitrary one where well, it means in some sense to choose an order among them and go in that order right so if we choose different orderings then we'll get different trees so therefore if we have multiple edges in a tree which have the same weight in general we may not get a unique spanning tree in fact you can check if you have all weights the same for example that basically you can have keep adding or dropping different edges and you will have an exponential number of trees okay because an edge could be there in one tree may not be there in another tree and so on right so overall the number of possible minimum cost spanning trees could be very large what prim's algorithm does and what kruskal also will do when we look at it in the next lecture is to use a greedy strategy to effic efficiently pick out one of these possible things now if the edge weights are unique there is not much choice you have to pick out the same tree but if the edge weights are duplicated you can definitely have multiple trees and this strategy of picking out the smallest one at each stage will give us a quick way to identify one of the smallest ones but not a unique one 